Miguel's wife, Nazanin Mandy, files for divorce. I hope I didn't butcher her name. Nazanin Mandy. I believe I got it right. Anyway, she files for divorce after three years of marriage. And they were together, I believe, for 17 years. I think they were like high school sweethearts or something. But this news came in yesterday or uh, possibly, I think, this morning. And then just seeing how uh, Tia... Maury and her husband Corey how they just divorced the other day and all of these divorces are just breaking out and I'm just thinking wow like marriage is really looking bad in 2022 I don't know what's going on but there was something that Tia and Nazanin have in common when it came to divorce they both filed against their respective husbands for irreconcilable differences. And that's what I've seen um, throughout the blogs and throughout TMZ and all these different things, irreconcilable differences. So I was like, you know what? We talk about that a lot or when it comes down to divorces, sometimes people use that, but let's define what irreconcilable differences is because I want to do a little research. If you wanna take notes, take notes. I wanna talk about this in detail because that was the one thing that both women had in common when they filed. Irreconcilable differences technically means that an individual and their spouse cannot get along with one another, one another enough to keep the marriage alive. And this lack of getting along can cause a whole array of other issues in the marriage such as now let's look at some of these examples of irreconcilable differences. Examples are lengthy, long distance separation due to work or other causes, uh, because you know they're um, TV show stars, uh, um, music artists, stuff like that. So a lot of times they can be on the road, you know, long distance here and there. The second one is difference of opinion on having children or how to raise children. That is a huge one. I've struggled with that in my last marriage where you're trying to raise your child in such a way because you're seeing things one way, she see things another way. And it's like, how do we effectively parent our child? I think we don't talk about that enough, especially during the dating stage. The next one is difference of religion. Do you believe that different religions can get along and still marry? What are your thoughts on that? Personality conflicts, you have that as well. Then excessive fighting or discord, lack of communication, a loss of trust between partners. I think when you don't have trust, you can throw away the relationship when you don't have trust or when trust has been broken. I did a video on that on how do you regain trust after it's been broken? So again, these are the two things that both ladies have in common with Tia and Nazanin is that they both file for irreconcilable differences. Now, 70% of divorces, some of you are, are familiar with this, 70% of divorces are initiated by women, but why? Again, let's do a little more research. Indifference or cluelessness to the husband and their feelings. That's the first one. And that's basically the wife thinking that the husband should know her by now. There should be some things that he know about her initially that sometimes he just might not know. And she's thinking, I thought you knew me better than that. You know how I am. So she's looking at this as an intimacy thing where you should know me in depth, but he don't know her in depth or he's not taking that time to study her as much as she know about him. Because one thing about women is they will study and they will learn. A lot of times guys don't take that initiative to learn his woman in detail and how uh, he can know her better. So that way she feels a little more secure about when he's going to do things for her, like he can go and buy her a pair of shoes or something like that, you know, just stuff that he can know in detail. He know her shoe size, but sometimes some guys just don't know. So sometimes women feel like they're not being connected because she's like, I thought you would know that about me. So 
that is uh, indifference or cluelessness of the husband to their feelings. The second one is small gestures and reassurance are missing. The old heads used to say, whatever you did to get them is what you got to do to keep them. That's what the old heads would tell us. And it's these small gestures. What is her favorite candy bar? What is her favorite donuts? Like just little small stuff. I was thinking, do she like roses? Do she like orchids? All these different things. Like she just want to know these little small gestures to see if you really care. And it makes her feel important. Then you have the big money problems. I don't think I have to go in detail about that. Usually one of you are a spender, one of you are a saver. And I did a video on that as well, as far as should we date on the same level financially, you can check that out as well. So, you know, money problems is a big one. Needs not being met at home. That's another one. Husbands who cheat on their wives. Marriage not living up to expectations. Now, this can be a tricky one sometimes because I don't think we take the necessary time to ask, what are your expectations of me in this marriage? Or due to programming or the way we were raised in our household, what do you think a healthy marriage look like? Because programming is everything. When you grow up in a, in a household or you watch your TV shows and movies and you have an idea of what you think a marriage should be, so you go into this marriage thinking it should be what you saw growing up or what you saw on TV and your spouse isn't like that. You fall in love with the idea, but not the actual person. You have just this image in your head and a way you want things to be. It don't turn out like that. So it becomes frustrating. Then you have substance abuse. That's another big one. Uh, lack of romance. Again, what are these small things you're doing? Is it date night? It doesn't have to, you don't have to go and buy a Bugatti. You don't have to buy, uh, you know, a, a $10,000 purse. If you got that, hey, praise the Lord. But if you don't, it could just be that small things of romance. You know, maybe you can do date night. Maybe you can cook dinner at home. Even if you can't cook, maybe you can order something and get the kids put away for the night and y'all have just that little intimate time together. One thing I found that worked for my wife and I is we read books together. That is something that uh, we both find romantic where something that we can connect on a deeper level, on an intimate level. Just reading books together and finding out more about each other as we grow through this marriage process. And the last one is physical and emotional abuse. I don't think I have to go in detail about that as well because that happens a lot and I don't think we discuss it as much. Some people like to keep it under wraps because sometimes they might be in certain situations where they can't get away or things of that nature. Uh, and that's another topic within itself. So those are the ones on why women initiate divorce. Oh, and there was another one that was uh, as far as household chores that a lot of women feel like there's an imbalance when it comes to the home or maybe that maybe that fell under the uh, needs not being met at home. That's what it was. Needs not being met at home where women feel like there's an imbalance where she's taking care of the kids. She's working. She's washing clothes. She's washing dishes. She's putting the dishes away. She's doing all these different things in the house. And just because as a man, you bring home a check, you think that's all that you have to do. But there's this imbalance because she's doing everything at home. She's doing a grocery shopping, making a grocery list. Uh, sometimes she's paying the bills. So she's feeling like, why do I even need you for? Because, uh, hey, a lot of times, you know, women, they can do they can do it on their own. So if you're not helping, she's like, I could just do this without you. So that's that imbalance, uh, helping the kids with the homework, especially if you got younger kids, things of that nature. So women are frustrated with the imbalance. And then sometimes women even feel like they got to take care of their husband as well. They're like, I got another baby. I got to take care of you too. So I said all this to say, especially with these divorces with uh, Miguel's wife, and then I just did a video the other day with, with Tia and her husband. And I'm just like, y'all making me do these videos and, and creating these podcasts on these divorces. We got to make a change around here. Uh, so let me know in the comment section, what do you think as a woman or as a man, what do you think why women initiate divorce maybe in your own personal life or something that you've seen 
uh, a family member of yours go through. So leave a comment below. We'd love to hear from you. Make sure you leave a rating and review. If you're listening to this on Apple Podcasts, I would love to hear from you. Leave an honest rating and review. I would appreciate that. That will put you in a drawing for a free Amazon gift card. And if you are watching this via YouTube, make sure you hit the subscribe button. Make sure you share this with someone. I know this is a current topic, but there's so much more that I wanted to address concerning uh, women and going through the divorce process. I think it's a conversation worth having. Take care, people.